Hey guys, we're here at Lux in our uh, shop studio area and uh, we have this new Rogue, or it's a 2020 Rogue. One of the employees is driving it until her new car is ready, but it has some very, very interesting taillights with some nice deep recesses and uh, interesting things. So we figured we would shoot a video here and uh, see what you guys think of our technique and then actually see if you have any good techniques. If anybody else wants to go find this vehicle and shoot their installation technique on it, it'll be fun, comment that below. And uh, who knows what all techniques we'll see. I bet a lot will be more similar than you think, but yeah, let's go. Okay, so we were just talking about how much film we were gonna need for this light and uh, taking a look at it next to this roll here. So with 20 inches of material, if I'm on the front of the light here, we're gonna get about that far away. Now we're gonna pull a lot a stretch on this material. Uh, we've done this a couple times already with surprised how well the application went and we cut it out of this direction. So we're gonna try that now. We're using the training material so we can see how much these squares stretch to see what our final stretch looks like. But I think you're gonna be able to get this out of the 20. All right, Jose's gonna pop that trunk so we can try to grab these corners. Obviously they're pretty sharp, so you wanna be careful and not tear your light wrap there. Um, all right, let's go for this. Ooh. Got it, pops up. Low 70s in the shop right now, maybe. Um, Get a little warmer outside, which is nice. We have it nice and warm in here. Come back towards me a little. There we go. Now, the reason we pulled all that stretch was so that we could activate that memory right here, get this to conform with no tension, no heat. There we go. We were shooting a video to illustrate different types of tint a minute ago, we tried this technique dry with a non-air release film. It was pretty surprising how it went down. Weren't sure if it was gonna stay or not, but still was surprising. As you can see, the entire top deck right there is done. Pretty close at this bottom corner here. <laughs> but we're good. You can see there's no tension up and down. So even though we're really close right here and there's only like a half inch worth of film, there's no uh, jeopardy of it pulling back up. The only part of this light where I'm concerned for longevity's sake is down under these really cheap or uh, deep channels. That's what we're trying to achieve here with this test, with this install, is to see how well we can get it to conform in this area. And to show you my technique on how I would try. All right. So, you can see now, keep the film nice and warm, 
I'm pushing right into the deepest part of that channel. Now I'm going to go straight for the bottom and get this area nice and warm. Push the film down. You can see I walked it along that ridge. I didn't actually push any of this up here, trying to get all the stretch to come from the middle instead of coming from that thick side. So I'm gonna do the same thing at the top, trying to achieve that same thing. Now come back and lock down the flat area. While doing that, I'm lifting the film off the vehicle, but I'm not stretching it around this edge. I'm trying to relax it. You're gonna have a ton of memory built up in these two areas here. This is the two areas where likeliness of failure is highest. Uh, so we're gonna do a couple things to try to mitigate that. I don't know though. I'm sure there's someone out there that would say use rapid promoter, some type of adhesive promoter. I'm gonna try to cut right past the light, lay that down. Of course, I do run the risk of that splitting into the light. I know that. Um, I'm, I'm banking on if that does happen, it'll be right in that corner, and that's right where the clear and the red plastics meet anyways. And uh, also, if it happens, it's going to only be a very short area, uh, short length. So the advantages of being able to reduce this tension here on this flat area and the top and the bottom ridges outweighs that potential little failure there. Because I know... The other way this is going to fail is by lifting up and down that channel. I thought I had a little crease right there for him. Nice. And we do have this weird little channel right in the middle of that light. Wow, all right. Now what we gotta do is lock this front edge. Now, if this were a textured film, uh, I would absolutely not have done that. That would have created like a break in the carbon fiber weave. It would have been really pretty and now it would be all twisted and wrinkly. So that technique only really works on like gloss and uh, satin films, nothing with texture, nothing with anything printed on it. Uh, but you can see this is, uh, I'm feeling really pretty good about this, not gonna lie. Now I do see up here at this top crease, there's one little bitty area that's just forming a little bridge across that. Um, I've seen a lot of guys post pictures and videos where they'll have that same little bit of air trapped into a crevice and they'll have just finished doing like wings on the side of Toyota taillights or a crevice like this. That's gonna lift, that's coming back. That's, uh, if there's anybody, any little bit of air in there, you can see that the film is not 100% applied, then that is a short term solution there. So I'll go ahead and trim out 
just the rest of this really aggressive area right here because I want to see if the film looks like it's going to stay. And uh, once I trim this out, we can put some heat on the edges and see what happens. We'll watch them pull back, watch them uh, deform and see if it looks like it would be, if it would lead to a long term, term failure. So while most of our printed products are laminated and we call them our FX line, this, this training material is specifically not laminated uh, so that you can work with the initial or the original thickness of the film. So as cool as this looks, I wouldn't leave it on long term. There we go, fully trimmed out, just a little over 10 minutes. I'll go ahead and get you a close up so you can see all of the different lines and the tension on the film right now. See, this is looking really, 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 really good in this area here. You would expect to see if this film was applied without any stretch this way, there would be a lot of rectangles that appeared to be tall because we would have had to pull everything out up. You can see, even though we pulled quite a bit of stretch initially, when you do it in the very beginning, you spread it out among the entire film. So if you look, the widest rectangles are right here. And they very quickly Go back to normal size. This is where I locked that edge. Look how wide they are. And when I lifted here, heated, I was able to shrink them back down to here and get that edge tension free. So this is a good looking install. We went over here, cut right along that edge. But there you go. We're gonna just pound this with some heat and see what happens to it. See if anything pulls back. Wow, nothing's moving. We're at 1130 degrees out of the gun right now. I'm gonna go ahead and say that has an extremely high likeliness of success. <laughs> of long-term success. Yeah. Uh, we would let this, we would definitely let this leave. This looks, this looks really good. Well, that's really cool. Okay, so what if you don't have an extra set of hands that can help you stretch that way? Or what if you wanna do this in two pieces, you're not comfortable with that? Uh, and again, as I said, I'm only extremely, I, I think this is a high likeliness of success, but not 100% confidence of success. So, um, you know, still would maybe try to talk the customer into two-toning these, uh, letting us do something creative. Maybe you wanna leave the clear part clear and only tint out the red. Heck, you could also just tint the clear part only uh, you could also probably get away with a two-tone design on this light since you have such a nice break in the two plastics. Uh, if you did that, I could see that you could hide the seam pretty easily here in these two channels. It's also worth looking at where the light turns on 
and where it doesn't. That'll help you find any seam locations. So as you can see here, right here in this crease, in this crease, those red lights aren't gonna interfere. Um, when we turn the blinkers on, there is a chance that a seam would show, but they're only gonna show during the blink. So that doesn't bother me either. Uh, you got a lot of potential things you could do with this light. Uh, and surprisingly, it looks like with just the base light wrap that a one piece is a solution. Uh, anybody that drives this vehicle, please go out and tint your taillights. Let's see what it looks like long-term. Anybody else that has access to one, go ahead and tint one and show us your technique. Uh, if you want to do it with some of this light wrap training material so that you can see the grid, hit us up and we'll get you some. Thanks. Okay, we were just talking about it actually. If Jose or I were to do this as solo install, um, then the we'd probably tack the film right here on the vehicle. Definitely a painter's tape here and here, but probably tack the film right here because it appears to be the flattest part of the vehicle where you can get the most surface area stuck. Hold it out this way, heat it, and pull like we did towards the back. But it's important to note, we were able to get this light done in a 20 inch piece of film. Definitely wouldn't attempt that solo because you've got to stick it to the vehicle and move it over further. Go ahead and cut this way. Start with at least 24 inches of film. You can definitely go more if you're not comfortable with going less. That's always better. Use a couple extra inches so you don't mess up your install and have to redo an entire light. Uh, it's also important to note, if you're gonna pull pretty strong this way and this way, that you wanna give yourself plenty of up and down because it is gonna hourglass a little bit when you pull and you don't wanna lose the height that way.